Governor Malley, thank you so much for joining sure. us. Appreciate thank it. You. How did you think the debate went? Do you think you broke through tonight in a way that you haven't in these past debates? Well, every time we have one of these debates, we exceed expectations, and that's what you have to do as a challenger. So it's a rough format. They tell you up front, you know, that <laughs> all of the questions are going to the front runners, and you have to jump in. But I thought we did a very good job tonight of laying out a vision for a new generation of leadership. Alone on that stage, I've actually gotten things done as an executive, whether it's health care or comprehensive gun safety legislation. And so I enjoyed tonight. Well, let's talk about guns. That was one of the most heated moments of the debate. Your argument, essentially, to Secretary Clinton and to Senator Sanders was that they've both flip flopped on this issue. Is that really fair? And do you think that you move the needle in that argument in any way? And, and is Bernie Sanders in some ways being disingenuous by changing his mind on the issue yesterday? Well, I think the reason we haven't gotten things done in Washington on this is because it was standard procedure for politicians, senators, congresspeople to kind of go back and forth on this issue. There's been no moral clarity on this in our Congress for a long time. So, yes, I believe it is true that Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders have both flip-flopped a lot on this issue. I have not. Since 2003, I've been advocating for a ban on combat assault weapons, and then alone on that stage, I'm the only one that actually got it done as a governor, and we didn't interrupt a single deer hunter's hunting season because of it. But is that realistic, given the current state of Congress, to get an assault on, a ban on assault weapons? I believe it is. I believe we can't give up. And look, I laid out uh, seven different executive actions that I would take, and I'm heartened by the fact that President Obama has taken some of them. We have to keep moving towards this consensus and putting it together. You can't relent. You, have, you can't give up. You and I are talking about health care. You say that you see Bernie Sanders' health care plan as a tax on the middle class. Did you need to be more aggressive on that point tonight to break through? Well, I thought Secretary Clinton was being <laughs> pretty aggressive on that. <laughs> but look, did you need to be to... more aggressive? You're the one who needs to see your poll numbers go up. Yeah. Well, look, I thought I was, uh, I was relentless and aggressive in talking about the fact that I've actually created a way to make the Affordable Care Act work that reduces hospital costs, that moves to global payments, and that was something I wasn't allowed to do by format in the last two debates. So I picked my moments. I didn't want to be part of their back and forth squabble, really. I'm a, I'm a former mayor. I'm a former governor. I'm about getting things done and actually making things work. And that's what we're doing with health care. And the New England Journal of Medicine, in fact, did an article just three weeks ago saying this is actually working. This is reducing costs. This is keeping people well. And this is what the future of health care could be. And Governor Malley, let's talk about your broader campaign. Your polls are in the single digits. At what point, or do you reach a point when you say you're not seeing the increase that you need to see to stay in the race? Well, I intend to let the people decide, especially the people of Iowa, where I've spent so much time, and then New Hampshire will decide. So uh, that's what our democracy is all about. There are many candidates who have been where I am in the polls, and then the people of Iowa have a way of lifting up a new leader and introducing that person to the rest of the country. So uh, I'm excited about caucus day, and I'm going to continue to to let the people decide and trust their judgment. And just finally, do you ever? Get get daunted when you wake up and you see the poll numbers stuck there? Yes, except that I've seen John Kerry, I've seen Jimmy Carter, I've seen many other candidates who are in a similar position. Uh, uh, with total respect for you and your colleagues, you rarely ever get it right when it comes to calling what the outcome of the race is going to be. And the people of Iowa aren't going to be pushed around. They make up their own. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.